What up, though? Welcome back to World of Heavyweights Live on WorldSports.com. And me is joined by Spin More Reaction, Chris, Nicholas Hello. Cole, a.k.a. Microwave Nick. Let's go. Uh, we're talking about the 800 and stuff, possibilities, replacements. Keep the names rolling. We'll, uh, we'll review them in the chat. Uh, we wrote some down as well. We might do a segment about it. But we do want to get on a little bit of the positive stuff, and this is the Detroit Lions absolute routing of the Dallas Cowboys in Jerry's world on Jerry's birthday. Ha, 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 ha. Happy birthday, Jerry. This next, I saw a clip of them walking back to the locker room following the game. Couldn't you could hear a fucking mouse take a shit? It was, it was, it was. I want to know what that locker room was like in there following that game. What an ass whooping that was! And it's everything we told you was gonna be. It's everything we, we told you this, this Dallas Cowboys team was last year. Mm -hmm. This year, obviously, missed a little piece on defense, it was healthy on offense, was doing shit. Not a fucking touchdown scored yesterday, gentlemen. Not a single one. The one time, in fact, I remember they got into the red zone. Maybe it was, maybe it was two other times because they only had nine points. Yeah. Brian Branch picked that bitch off. Brian Branch picked it off in the end zone. Kirby Joseph, four interceptions on the season so far, all of them in the end zone. They do not let teams score when they get in the red zone. You love to see that. This was, you know, before, obviously, the devastating injury, the most satisfying game I've ever seen the Detroit Lions play. They were dominating them in all sides of the ball, in all facets of the game. The refs didn't play a factor in it. They didn't allow the refs to play a factor in it. They were running the ball down their throat with Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, just gashing them in the run game. And Jared Goff, someone must have pooped in his Wheaties or, like, I don't know. He is absolutely lighting teams on fire. His past three games, he has been very, very, very good. And uh, it, it's awesome to watch. We saw Tim Patrick get involved. We saw Jamison Williams be a focal point. Amon Ross St. Brown got in there a little late. Penny uh, fucking soul. Penny soul hitching ladder. I Taylor Decker got yeah, in like, there. I, I, co I coined it the three flicker, which was the uh, pitch to David Montgomery, back to Amon Ra, back to Jared Goff, to uh, Sam Laporta for the touchdown. Just an amazing play designed by Ben Johnson. That guy should have got a game ball. And another guy that should have got a game ball is Jake Bates. Jake Bates. Jake Bates was perfect in this game. I 17 believe. points. 17 points. He had th uh, three field goals or four field goals. Knocked them all down. Knocked down all his extra points as well. It was great to see that Jake Bates just going out there. Again, another time this year where he bails out the offense. Amon Ross St. Brown got a penalty for taunting or unsportsmanlike conduct or whatever that was after his touchdown. Backed up the extra point attempt. Jake Bates knocks it down. Did the same thing when J-Mo dunked the basket, dunked the football well, in he's the goal better post. better from distance. Yeah. I feel more really comfortable is. with him kicking a 40-yarder than a 20-yarder. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, it, it is crazy. Detroit Lions. I haven't seen a ride. There's been one other time I, I saw a riding like that from this team, but it didn't come with the history the Dallas Cowboys gave you because obviously you saw it yesterday. The rest were on display. I may be biased as a Lions fan, but I don't know if you guys remember back in the day, the Detroit Lions fucking routed Tim Tebow and the Denver Broncos. I think that was at their place as well. I remember Stephen Tulloch was fucking hitting the Tebow after sacks and whatnot. Like, this was that style of game, like reincarnated for the Detroit Lions, except for this one against the Cowboys who routinely fucked you. Yes. You had the picked up flag, the game from last year. Kirby had an extra interception taken off the board. Taken away. For a, it was, I guess a fair It was a, it it was was a, a good call. holding call. It was like, a good call. That's <laughs> a routine play in my mind still, though, out of the linebacker position or, or any coverage. Exactly. Um, Kirby, I'm not sorry, I already said the Kirby one. Penay's touchdown called back. Jamal had a touchdown called back. Like, it's, it was so much more of an ass whooping. And those plays still happen for people to see. They're like in your memory, but they just didn't count on the board. It, it was. It was beautiful. And, and, and what happened these past two weeks? You said someone shit in Jared Goff's Wheaties? No. That run game. Ben Johnson, Dan Campbell finally got back to the identity of this football team. And it's Sonic and Knuckles. Give those guys the ball and put the fear of God into the, yes. to the defensive side. Like you saw in the first touchdown run, another angry run. I don't know if it went, when's that the cipher, or was it called Scepter? Scepter. Does it come out tomorrow because he has to do so. Monday Night Football? Yeah. He might get it again. He should. He might get it again. That, that was another was filthy awesome. one. Yeah, I love Dave Montgomery. for air. And you're right, that run game, a little bit of lightning, a little bit of thunder. Lightning, like these, thunder. These guys went out there, and David Montgomery, boom, boom, right in your face, right down the middle. And then you you give Jameer Gibbs the ball, you put Hess, Hess in front of him, and he is gashing the Cowboys yeah, man. like 10 yards a carry. They were giving it to him, and he'd get a first down. They're like, all right, I guess first to 10, we'll run it again. Another first down. Yeah, well, we might as well, you know, if it ain't broken, I ain't fix it. Run it again, another first down. It is 
exactly what I wanted to see, exactly what I expected to happen. You have, I think, the best running back tandem in football, the best running game in football. Obviously, Baltimore is going to be up there because their quarterback oh, runs yeah. for 1,000 yards a game. But without a mobile quarterback, the Lions have the best running game in football. And seeing them just exert their will against these shitty, poopy Dallas Cowboys, it was awesome. I loved every minute of it. I loved seeing Jordan Lewis cry like a little bitch during and after the game. We'll get into that later. Yeah. But I, I just, it was so awesome seeing David Montgomery beat David Montgomery. Yes. I said it, I disrespected him earlier in the year. I said he might not be top 15. He might be top three so far this season. Like, David Montgomery has been one of the best backs in the NFL, and he's so reliable. They never fumble the ball. They just go out there and take care of the ball. Chris, shout out. In this season. He said it was personal, and he's playing like it. it, it you, just, you just feel it. And it's crazy because you're not even in the fucking building yeah. to, to, to feel like the – the or the intent that he has when he has that football in his hands. He is looking to fucking hurt somebody or prove a point on every single run. And I just love it. And there's no, yes, obviously, when he scores the touchdowns, you get the sellies. But there's just, like, it's just business. Business as usual. There's another fucking, yeah, none of that shit. It's like, let's fucking go again. Yep. Feed me that rock just give again. Him the ball. Let's fucking go, boys. That's all he wants. That's all he cares about. Nick? I think we could legit do two hours just on our run game yes between Gibbs and demon and I'd, I'd be fired up talking about it but i want to yeah. give some shine here to the quarterback fellas and this quarterback jared goff is leading the whole entire nfl in yards per attempt and you think about it one thing that i wanted to see golf improve on fellas the deep ball accuracy he was able to get the ball to tim is patrick yards or get yards? the ball to jmo 8.9 yards attempt leading the league leading the nfl so it doesn't matter to me. He's, he's leading yeah. the NFL. He's getting better, and I think that is so big. If he hits on these deep passes, which he has struggled with early in his Lions career, so for him to be able to hit these deep balls opens up everything for that elite run game yeah. where you can't just load the box. I think it's the other way around. Yeah, personally. it's a run game opening uh, those up. The run game opens oh, yeah. those up. No, I wanted though. to get into that next segment, uh, the J Jared Goff factor and all the different pass catchers that came in. Chris has something too. Yeah, we only had three minutes left. That deserves a lot of praise by itself. Chris? I mean, it was kind of to go go off of, because I can't really say much more than you guys have already said when you look at just what the, that run game did this game. But my friend who doesn't watch a lick of sports, he has, like, the best analogy for Montgomery. He's just, like, he was just watching the game with me, and he goes, dude, there is no way that we are the same species. Like, we are both not yeah. humans. There's, there's no way doing what, he, dog doing what he does. Him. And he knows nothing about sports. He doesn't understand the context of scheming or anything like that. He just watches this dude physically impose his will every single drive. And it's, it's amazing to see. But you're right. That you're, you're right, Nick. Like, it does, it does work the reverse effect. That if Goff can really unlock that deep ball... And JMO can be that deep threat, which is why I think they kind of force fed him a lot early in early in the season to really just establish that as a real, real threat. That it will help the run game even more, even though it all starts with the run game. But that will also benefit the run game as well and make it even more unstoppable. Yeah, and I, I again I do want to get into to Jared Goff and, and Tim Patrick and Jameson Williams and Sam Laporta getting involved in this game. Uh, but I'm going to save that for the next segment because we only got one minute left here. So I did just want to say this. Is I said it on the on the stream. I said it uh, when Herman Moore invited us on his show. You got to send five to stop five. Like when David Montgomery has the ball, one guy's not going to get him down. Two guys aren't going to get him down. Three guys probably aren't going to get him down, and then he'll bounce off them and make somebody else look stupid. So to get five down, you got to send five. And he was running like that, man. Like a, just an absolute madman making things happen. You loved, loved to see it.